All right, well, here we are. Good morning, yes. Give a few moments. Oh, hello. Hi, Amelia and Connor. Welcome to this, welcome to this installment of Curiosity Corner Live. Thanks for joining me. We'll wait for a few more moments. Oh, hello, Cameron. Hello, Julie. Hello, Elijah. Great to see you. Hi, Alyssa. Good morning. I apologize if I mispronounce uh, Niha and Nightish. I'm sorry if I mispronounce that. Hi, Isaac. All right. Well, looks like we have a good amount of people here. So I'm going to get started with today. Um, I'm excited too. Um, today we're going to be talking about a few different things. Um, but first, of course, um, thank you for joining me today for Curiosity Corner Live. My name is Andy. I wear bow ties because bow ties are cool. And um, Science Center is still closed. But Curiosity Corner Live is just going to keep going. We're going to bring you new things every day, including design challenges and live demonstrations. And we are doing a week-long design challenge. We're designing marble runs this week. And we talked about the basics of marble runs yesterday, how to make ramps and how to get something from point A to point B. And today we're going to be exploring something new that you could add into your marble run. Um, and that is something that spins. So first things first, we're going to talk about spinning. So with spinning, um, I have a roll of masking tape here and I can spin it. Um, when, when you spin, when something spins or when you spin, um, what do you have to do to get it to start spinning? So I'm spinning, it's not spinning right now. I have to do something to get this thing to spin. And it's, whoops. <laughs> okay, I should stop spinning that or else I'll get too excited about that, a roll of masking tape. Um, you have to push on it. So yeah, you have to twist it. Um, you twist it and you let go. So you push on it, you twist it. So what I'm doing here is I'm pushing on one end and pushing on another and phew, then it starts spinning. When you spin yourself, you push off the ground and you start to spin. I'm actually on a spinny chair. So I push off the ground and it spins me um, that way. So you need a force. Um, motion, whenever something's moving, there's always a force behind it. And the force here is actually in a line. Forces always go in a line. They're one dimensional. Um, so what happens with spinning is you take a line and you turn it into something that's going in a circle, which is pretty cool. Um, so I tell you that because when we talk about things like pinwheels and we talk about things like spinning chairs and anything that rotates, we need to understand that there's spinning force behind that spinning. Oh, bow tie Wednesday. That sounds like a great, <laughs> that's like bow tie of oh man. Bowtie Wednesday is a great idea, so I'm glad that your school does that. Um, so I'm going to show you how to make your own pinwheel. Um, first thing that you need, you only need a few things. Um, obviously, you'll need something to cut some paper with. Paper. And I have a thumbtack right here. Thumbtack. Um, 
if you're using a thumbtack, make sure you have a grown-up helping you because they're pointy. We don't want to get hurt by the thumbtack. Um, and you'll need something to use as a handle. So I have some uh, craft sticks, jumbo popsicle sticks, um, that I'm going to tape together to make my um, handle. But let's tape those together first. That's the easy part. So I'll tape those together and make a good handle. And of course, tape. You'll need tape. You could use glue for this as well. But anything adhesive, anything that sticks. Um, I like using tape because I can, if I make a mistake, I can fix it really easily if I'm using tape. So there we go. I made my handle. That will work. So, yes, I have two popsicle sticks that I tape together. Or craft sticks, whatever these are. So, now I have this piece of paper, but I need a square piece of paper. Um, and there's a few ways to make square pieces of paper. One way that I know that's really good is if you take a corner of it and fold it over like this so that it makes a triangle and everything lines up, all the edges line up. So I'm lining it up so this flap is folded over and lines up with this side like that. Um, and it makes a right triangle. So this corner right here is a square. That's how I know it's a right triangle. So I'm making sure that that's a pretty good triangle. And this extra stuff, I'm going to cut that off carefully. Very carefully. And I will use this extra stuff for something later. Um, because you got to make sure that you're using everything that you cut off, everything that you, you don't want any waste is what I'm saying. So you want to make sure you're recycling whatever you're using. You can use this for all sorts of different things. You can make a smaller pinwheel. You could, you could cut it into the little squares and make little pinwheels out of that. But, so I have a square piece of paper now that's folded in half diagonally. And I will fold it again diagonally so we have sort of an X shape in the middle. And there we go. So there's an X that I've made with folds. And that's how that's set up. Nice big square with some folds. Um, and these folds are really helpful because I'm going to cut down diagonally toward the center um, about halfway. So I'll show you right here. It's a little tricky. There we go. So I'm cutting diagonally so that I have these two flaps. Oh, Dylan says it's been so windy. Pinwheel is a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I may or may not have been inspired by the weather for this experiment. So there we go. And if you wanted to measure exactly how far to make it, you can always use a ruler. I have a ruler here. This ruler is in centimeters. So I'm going to measure how far in I'm going just to make sure that they're relatively equal. So it looks like that's about 8 centimeters. Let's see how far this one is. That one's also eight centimeters. Looks like I'm measuring it pretty good. And then if you have a pen, bing, you can make a mark where you want to cut the little flaps to. So I'm making a mark at eight centimeters so that I know to cut to that point. There's a, uh, engineers sometimes say, measure twice, cut once. Um, <laughs> and we're all being engineers here. So I've made some flaps here. So now the X has turned into sort of two hourglasses stuck together. And I am gonna take the flap here and fold it toward the center. But I don't want to fold every single flap. 
there are about eight of these, and I only want to do every every other one, not every single one. So I'm actually going to put um, numbers on here. So that's flap one, that's flap two, and there's flap three, there's flap four, there's flap five, and flap six, and flap seven, and flap eight. So the reason I don't want to fold all the flaps is because if I folded every flap, then I wouldn't get a pinwheel. I would get, I don't know, a roll. Um, a pinwheel is, it's a wheel. How do I explain a pinwheel? A pinwheel is, it's a special shape that will allow it to catch wind and spin and I'll, I'll show you once this is finished flat so i'm going to use one three five and seven all the odd numbered flaps i'm going to fold that in and i'm going to use some tape and tape it into the center so it's a little tricky getting each flap in there so i'm going to use one piece of tape to get one and seven together. There we go. And then I'm going to use five and three. Oh, a turbine. Yeah, a turbine is another kind. They're kind of like turbines. They're kind of like wind turbines, but they're really small. It's a wheel that spins in the wind. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to explain it. It's a wheel that spins in the wind. And they're designed to catch the wind, just like a wind turbine. There we go. So that, that's a pinwheel. Um, but it can't spin. I mean, it can spin, but it it needs something. It needs a point in the middle called a pivot point where it can spin freely. So that's where the thumbtack comes in. And this is, this is where you might need to get a grown-up's help um, because you have to get this thumbtack through the center of the pinwheel without hurting your fingers. So I need to be careful. I'm holding my fingers pretty far on one side so that I don't hurt myself. But fortunately, it's made of paper. There we go. So I have the thumbtack through the paper of the pinwheel so that the pinwheel can spin freely around there. And I'm going to move the thumbtack around so that the hole that it made allows it to spin end of the thumbtack, but I would rather hold a handle. So I'm going to take this craft stick and I'm going to push the pin, the thumbtack into the craft stick. And there we go. Make sure it's a little... Wheels are built to um, spin in the wind. So if I blow on this thing, There we go. It's been pretty well. Each one of these leaves or blades, the air comes in and pushes on the part that's folded. And then it makes that line, that, that force. And it pushes, but because this thing has this point in the middle, the pivot point, it's able to spin really easily. Now, somebody mentioned turbines before, um, and turbines are like giant pinwheels, and they, they're they built very much like a pinwheel. They're built to be um, thin blades that spin freely, so you can use those to generate electricity. And I'll show you a little miniature pinwheel right here, or turbine. I have this base, and then I have another pinwheel that I made earlier, and I'm just going to stick that right on there. Now, this is a miniature. You can tell why they're called alligator clips. R. And I'm going to connect that to this thing. This is a voltmeter. <laughs> and I'm going to turn that on, and that's going to tell me how much energy, how much electrical energy 
this little pinwheel can make if I um, add a force. So I'm going to blow on this and see how much energy. Of course, it's not perfect. There we go. Looks like it was going up pretty high. Um, if I had this out in the wind, it could probably go pretty fast. If I had a fan aimed at it, I could get it to spin pretty well. Now, that brings us to this week's week-long challenge. We've been making um, all sorts of different parts from Marble Run. So you can add a pinwheel to your Marble Run in a couple different ways. One way is you could build your pinwheel to make sure that if a marble hits it, it spins it, adds a little movement to your marble run, that horizontal linear motion, changing it into spinning rotational motion. That's one way you could do it. Or you can use these leaves, these blades of the pinwheel as curved tracks. And that's where this comes in. You could use this and there's a really easy way to make a curved track. You just cut a little flap in there and then fold it. Whoops, you fold it. And there's your curve. So you can use that, that idea, to make curved tracks for your marble run. And if you add a few more little flaps and fold them over like that, then you can make a bowl shape but you can use that as a curved track. So my challenge to you is add on to your marble runs, add something that spins like a pinwheel, or maybe add some curved track and share those results on social media with our hashtag stay curious CLE. And I'll check out what you make. And then at three o'clock today, I will come back and I'll show you what I've made with these ideas involved um and we'll see how we'll see we'll see what you come up with i'm really excited to see what you come up with um, thanks for joining me today on curiosity corner live my name is andy and as always remember to stay safe and stay curious and i'll see you again at three o'clock with our follow-up thank you for coming by and Bye-bye, everybody.